Okay, we're on episode eight of Design Time. We're gonna talk about a couple cool things. These are some cute competition green Willwood calipers that we got special from Willwood and we are adding them onto the pick cart. We ran into one snag. I had the CAD file for the Kansai tandems, and then we ended up getting the 15 inch KNP wheels, which I didn't have the CAD file. So when I made the rotors, the caliper cleared the wheel for the tandems, but it does not clear the wheel for the KNP. So we have to make a rotor now that's offset. I'll show you that on the screen, but basically that's all we need to do to get these babies on. Hell Performance is making us all brake lines. We made a diagram. Made this quick little clasp. Actually was put on upside down, so I didn't install this. This little horseshoe is a clasp for our beautiful handle. It's designed to sit nice and flush there, and then it holds on to our tongue. And on our tongue, you can notice we have mounted the Willwood master handle integration with a parking brake. So this is all gonna come together. This thing is actually not bad to move by yourself, even weighing 3000 pounds. It's just coming down a ramp or something. You gotta have a way to stop it. This thing will push my feet as if I'm moonwalking through the dirt, through the whatever, or it'll run you over. So we have some cool things to go over for this. I haven't made a mount for these yet. They So for right now, they just sit. But we found out that this actually works perfectly for the rush car. Absolutely no need to make a kit different from what we already make. That goes on there, one sec. This goes on here, same thing. You can put your wheel lugs in the spot drop it down and then on the back side of it, there's one location on the back side of these cars. All we would need to provide as a kit is two clamps that are gonna mount to this square tube here. And then we're gonna send it with an inch and a quarter tube that's about this long. And then conveniently enough, without even measuring or nothing, the top setting of the pin stand matches perfectly to hold the car level so you'll actually use the higher post on the back and then you'll use the middle position on the front and it holds the car perfectly level we did this last week we just didn't film it so i mean without even really trying we may have made a jack stand kit for servicing your rush cars and as far as i'm aware these cars are chassis numbers like 253 256 I think they've made about 300 and something of these cars and they're continuing to make more and more and more every month. So, you know, if people want to work on these, make a little kit, uh, we might've just come up with a product. Um, we never really talked about this, but this car, we actually did custom seat brackets to hold our regular D&D &D halo seat. So we designed those, those will fit basically any standard racing seat. And I find my brother and I being as tall as we are, we raised the column move the dash up, and we find this seat to be way, way, way more comfortable, easier to get in and out of. Another thing we designed was the wheels on the back of these cars was throwing rocks into these side pods like crazy. So we designed these block off panels, just a couple spots where we can add some zip ties and then it bolts on the bottom. So no more rocks can be stored in the side pod. I swear there was 10 pounds of rocks just from the pits the first time we drove this sitting in this area. When you race in the rain, a ton of water gets thrown on the electronics up in here. So these work as block offs for those. I'm gonna send you some photos or a video. I forget what he sent me, but we had a customer that blew up his drive shaft. One of the Kennedy brothers. <laughs> and this is the drive shaft. This is the drive shaft kit. So basically we've made and sold several of these. These markings represent the widths that you can zip cut these at to weld into your transmission tunnel. And then we posted the dimensions of these widths on the actual product. So like you can just go in there with a tape measure, measure your transmission tunnel, buy this kit, knowing that one of these lines is gonna give you the exact correct width for your transmission tunnel. How this saved absolutely everything to the point where he sent us a message a week later after buying it or something saying this really saved my car so that's really cool yeah and we made some seat brackets for the 370z making one more change 
because what I designed the seat bracket off of was from one 3D scan seat. We now put in a different seat that I don't have a 3D scan of and wouldn't you know it, it fits completely different. A couple modifications, but we're pretty much in a real good spot. So these are the brackets installed. This seat is just shaped in a way that makes it not fit nearly as good as the other one, but we are really low. The only issue is being this low, we actually had to put it on the highest height setting, which isn't gonna make any sense because you can't raise this seat, this particular seat anymore from its current location. Whereas the other seat where I had this assembled was almost on its maximum low position in the same spot. So basically what I'm telling you is that the holes on the seat are in a different height reference to the bottom of the seat versus the other one that I have a scan of. A little bit annoying, but it means we can further adapt the bracket to be more universal. So I'm adding another row of holes above these ones in the rear. As far as forward and back adjustments, we are looking pretty good. And yeah, this is the new D&D Coda. Now me saying that about the mounting points on this seat, it doesn't make it a bad seat by any means. It's just different. I would say probably a good thing that it's that different because then I can see because nobody's going to be running the same seat. You got all kinds of different brands. Seat brackets notoriously have always been a huge pain in the ass. Massive. That's honestly why I don't even make that many products regarding seat brackets because even the Corvette, we've got it pretty dialed, but even the Corvette with flat floors, people still buy seats that somehow tend to don't fit. Not very often anymore. Uh, we pretty much matched every single seat possible, but always, always, always a pain. But that's the result. I know you guys saw that on one of the last design times, so we'll go inside, look at the computer. I'll show you the rotor and stuff that we're gonna be making for this. And uh, also, one other thing, I'm making a bar it's gonna be 71 inches long. It's gonna have two pins welded, two by two by 3 16 square tube with two pucks on it. And you may not have guessed it, but it's gonna sit here, there, and then have pins. So I'm gonna slide this onto the rocker and the hoist is gonna lift this car up from the lovely rocker pins stands spots. And I've never been more excited. This car and anyone who else that owns a Corvette knows these hoists were not made to lift up these cars. They're made to lift up four door cars and anything bigger than that. What a pain in the butt again. You know, a lot of products come from things being a pain in the ass is what I'm really finding. So it's not a bad thing that something sucks like that, but we're gonna make this happen. It's gonna be fantastic to work on. The car's gonna roll in. We'll slap them on before we even get it in between the posts. Then we can just quickly put the arm under the puck and jack her up and it's gonna be fantastic. As far as safety, I know there's gonna be people that are gonna be like, that's not safe. But honestly, there isn't a way that it can come out of the car. The pins are 10 inches long. Even if the arms were to be able to retract all the way outwards to the post, the pins would still be inside of the car. So if anything, it's safer. But obviously we're relying on the materials that we use. So sizing the square tubing, and the pins according to the mass of the car is always very important, but uh, we're oversizing it, so don't worry. Show you a couple screen grabs and then that's it for this episode. We'll have more for you guys next week. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. You can see this is exactly where our drill jig uh, went through the rocker and had the holes put into it. So we have the rally stands in their place. I'm just gonna hide it now and you can see that we're gonna have pins welded in here, pucks, uh, probably honestly just cut offs from the water jet welded to the bottom of the tube. And that's what's gonna be able to go in and allow us to pick up this car much, much easier. You can see under here, we simply can't get the hoist arms to line up with the two spots that were meant. The hoist arm, one of them ends up around this area, which is on a slope. And then the other one ends up kind of in the same spot right on the slope. And that's simply because the chassis and the pickup points for the chassis are too narrow because it's only a two seater car. And really the solution would be is if the hoist legs were 
another foot wider so that the arms had more room to swing inward, but it's just not made for these types of cars. So doing what we're doing is gonna make it way easier and faster. The car is miserable to put on a hoist, especially when you have it at a ride height that looks cool, works well. It just does not pick up cars. So that's what we're gonna be doing there. On the next thing I was talking about, the brakes for the pick cart. This is an example of how we are making the three piece uh, rotors. So this is just an aluminum moon that we're cutting uh, from three quarter inch aluminum. It's gonna have the holes already through it. Then we'll have a hat and then we'll have the rotor. Um, this would not be great to put on like a streetcar and it wouldn't be that balanced or anything, but this thing's never gonna see over 20 kilometers an hour probably. And uh, the forces on it that are being applied are not gonna be anything crazy. So this is totally fine for that. And then the, that was all I had to show you guys in regards to CAD work. We're working on producing a lot of the things that you saw on the last video. So I guess on episode nine, we'll probably cover the production of these. Um, we had rain cut out some, um, we're gonna have three or four different thicknesses of, fit, of shims. Rain cut out some 16 gauge, which are these. And then uh, 11 gauge, which are these. This is about a 16th, this is about an eighth. And then we're gonna have a quarter, three eighths, half. Yeah, because you don't necessarily wanna carry just like 20 of these, although that would be fine and that could work. Uh, we just wanna have a baseline that if you have four of these, you could just simply just have one quarter inch one, for example and less parts the better, um, less likely to come loose and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll put these into production um, next week. We're machining them now, and that's all we got for you on this design time. So we'll see you at the next one. I'm off to Colorado drifting my old S14. Definitely gonna have some content from that. That'll all be next week. See ya.